Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Velasquez. I'm a research scientist at MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics, and I'm going to be your host for this welcome webinar for the course, edX course, uh, SEM 290X, uh, Sustainable Supply Chain Management. And with me is Julia uh, Peterson. Uh, Julia? Hi, my name is Julia Peterson. I'm the TA of this course. So if you uh, enroll in the course, I will answer all your questions, like technical questions, everything else. Um, yeah, I'm happy that you're here. Excellent. Thank you, Julia. So uh, let me just explain how it's going to be. I'm going to share a, a slide deck and presentation that we have prepared to give you an intro uh, about the content of the course. And uh, feel free to just uh, type in the chat any questions, comments you, you have. And we have also with us, uh, uh, well, Julia, of course, and, and Camilo. Camilo Mora is going to also be helping in the chat. He's also one of the CTAs. And, uh, and then let's uh, hope we are able to clarify all your questions and get you also all enrolled to this uh, fascinating course that is a, an awesome journey to sustainable supply chains. So let me just start now by sharing the slide deck. So uh, as I said, this is a welcome webinar. And the idea is to give you a little bit of information. Uh, why uh, are we launching this course? What is the context we are living in the corporate uh, world, as well as in, in different countries, economies, and in society? And, uh, and also, what's going to be uh, different topics we are going to be covering here. So hopefully, you will find this very interesting and will join us. Uh, we will launch this course in just a matter of a couple of weeks. So we are very excited about it. All right, so let me just start with this. So first, as we all know, we are facing a difficult time. Just uh, some countries are facing the post-pandemic, while others still are struggling with the pandemic. Uh, we have observed that this is not just uh, something that affected the whole economy, but at the same time created a world crisis for humanity, right? Many of us have faced uh, difficulties in our, in our home countries. And, uh, and despite all the efforts we have put into growing and trying to mitigate this impact, uh, we know that the society has changed. And we know also that the conditions have changed. And now we, we, we are questioning ourselves whether we should do things differently for the future, where the things that are that uh, corporate corporations, uh, corporate world, countries, society is going to face in the next uh, 10 to 20, 30 years from now. Now, we know that this crisis also brought uh, uh, something good for those that are in the field on, on, on supply chain, which is at least uh, we always knew we were relevant. Now, everybody knows we are relevant. And, and that actually has been really interesting because uh, before it was really hard to explain what, uh, what are we doing here when we are conducting either research or working in companies in the field. Uh, but in reality now, the, the, the flow of materials, the flow of information, the flow of everything that is happening in the world actually depends entirely on how these global supply chains are built. And we've been struggling a lot to really understand, better understand what is this uh, signaling done, done by the consumers, how we can better predict uh, the needs of, of different people and how we can actually better uh, be better prepared in the supply side to really come up with better products and services and design the strategies that can that can be more responsive, more, more agile, and also more aligned with what are the needs and the different uh, uncertainties that are uh, you know in, in any almost product and service that now exists in the world. So now we know this is happening. We know also that many of the things that have been discussed in the last uh, two, three years, it was even before, but it was really emphasized and stressed out even more during these years, has to do a lot with uh, digitization. Right? We know that uh, uh, plenty of organizations started facing different stages of, uh, of, of technology adoption to be able to work in this now more virtual interactive world in which we were not able to really touch each other uh, not the product services in the same way that we were doing before or access to the same type of products and services. And the ways that we are envisioning how supply chains are going to be more competitive in the future has to do a lot with some of these recommendations that are uh, in, in the books of Professor Sheffy, uh, the director of the Center for Transportation, Transportation and Logistics at MIT, which is the boss of, of my boss. And, uh, and, and he mentioned interesting things related to this, uh, to this topic, how we can achieve in the supply chain more visibility. And this has to do with the fact that many of the products and services are coming from places that we haven't uh, identified yet. And that means these are potential vulnerabilities, not just in terms of risk management, but also in terms of sustainability as we see in a moment. But there is a lot, a, a huge wave 
happening also with the automation that is also bringing more more agility the e-commerce and omnichannel strategies and how all these uh, different domains are uh, shaping the way that we are accessing to products and services in the field of supply chain management so i'm pretty sure that i'm not saying anything new but at least i'm trying just to reflect on uh, what makes sense at this stage and why we are doing what we are doing by launching this uh, sustainability course now when we look at uh, different sources, and in this case, I'm just uh, uh, citing the reference of the World Economic Forum in one of the surveys that they launched in 21, 22, which is exactly the moment of uh, probably the peak of the pandemic uh, so far. And uh, one of the key questions asked to different practitioners, industry, and also policymakers was uh, related to the most severe risk for the next 10 years. And uh, what we see here is uh, that there are different categories related to economic, environmental, geopolitical, societal, and technological. Uh, the interesting part here is that uh, we can see just in the top 10, we see five of them are actually related to environmental, which is, of course, one of the, of the main uh, dimensions on sustainability related to the climate action failure, the extreme weather that we have, we have also faced that also relates to many different humanitarian challenges, the loss in biodiversity and different species that now have uh, gone extinct, as well as also the human environmental damage also caused by you know, respiratory disease and all this pollution, as well as the crisis in terms of the scarcity in natural resources. Now, this is again related to the topic again that we are living now with the different disruptions and the different challenges we face as a consequence of the pandemic. But it's also something that has been adding up for the last 100 years or more in which we have discovered how these anthropogenic emissions uh, are, are actually driving climate change and are creating global warming and are actually creating a risk for society uh, and also the economy in the way that we operate. Now we know this, sustainability is a hot topic. And just before starting with this, I would like to uh, launch a, a couple of polls, three questions, just to see also uh, what is your perspective on this. So let me launch the first one. Uh, relaunch, awesome. Fantastic. So uh, the question here is, does your company have explicit goals and strategies on sustainability? Now, what we are having here is three options. We have yes, no, not sure. And, and I'm looking at the results now, 60% of, uh, of uh, participation so far, 70% now. Now everybody's getting excited with this. I will show you in a moment the results. Let me just end the poll, but I wanna wait until we have a little bit more participation. Does your company have explicit goals, strategies, et cetera, on sustainability? All right, so I'm gonna wait until we get the 80% participation and then I will, I will end the poll. All right, almost there. So let me finish now and share the results. Okay, so we have, we have a winner here, uh, more than 60%, 61% says uh, yes, 22% says no, and 70% says not sure. All right, so that's uh, a little bit uh, expected. Let me ask now another question. So let me go just to understand what are those type of, uh, of goals. If so, what dimension of sustainability apart from the economic is your company mostly interested in? And, and again, I know that there is always discussions on this, which, which are the correct dimensions, ESG or others. In this case, I will just leave it in environmental, social, and then other, which mostly relate uh, to, to people. All right, so again, I'm gonna wait. We have so far 50% of participation. And I'm gonna wait a little bit more. So far, it seems one is winning. So the question is, if so, what dimension of sustainability apart from the economic is your company mostly interested in? All right, so I believe I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish it now so that everybody can see. Share results. Now you see eh, environmental seems to be the one that uh, companies seem mostly interested in, 67%, social 24%, and the other 9%. All right, so it seems still the environmental sustainability seems to be the most relevant for the companies, at least, not necessarily for, for, for you or for, or for or what is the most relevant. It's more mostly related to what uh, companies are saying. Now, let me ask the last question of this poll, and let me launch it now. 
Does your company or key customers have established clear carbon reduction targets for the next 10, 20, or 30 years? All right, so we have again the same options. Yes, no, not sure. All right, we are getting faster in this one. This is gonna be really interesting because it's not that clear as the other one. So we already saw that uh, the majority has either companies or key customers that are concerned about sustainability. Uh, we saw also the environmental sustainability seems to be the most relevant at this stage. And, uh, and the other is uh, whether the company or a key customer, because we know that there is certain influence that the customers may have in our companies, have established clear carbon reduction targets for the next years. All right, so we'll finish the poll now. And this is almost, almost a tie. Wow. So 42% uh, said yes, 35% said no, and 22% not sure. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for answering all of this. Well, this just in, in a way uh, emphasizes what I'm saying. We are just living at the moment of, uh, of an important uh, a post pandemic or pandemic and different disruptions have caused uh, many challenges, uh, create more awareness about the importance of supply chains. And, and what it seems to be something that uh, is not necessarily related to the economic growth should not be relevant. It seems that by the way, now plenty of companies are really paying attention, close attention to sustainability. Uh, the majority environmental sustainability, but also social. And we also know that at least in, in this poll run with, uh, with uh, those participants in this webinar, half of you uh, are very much uh, aware that uh, you have already carbon targets either in your companies or your key customers. And, and others said no, others said not sure. Now, what we see also in the news, well, we know that in 2019, uh, Amazon uh, started this uh, the climate pledge and it started with, uh, with them signing for a reduction of carbon emissions and a goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2050. Now, the interesting part is that already there are uh, 300 companies already across different industries and different countries that have already also signed a climate pledge. And you can see here some of them uh, very large from logistics, from consumer packaged goods, uh, from technology, from social media, companies are making pledges to really reduce their carbon emissions and achieve those uh, either carbon neutral or relevant significant reductions for the next years in hand with their corporate strategies. You know, meaning they need still to be competitive in the business, achieve their business goals, but inside to that also they are committing to reduce their emissions. Now, when we look at also, uh, you know, in, in terms of countries, and I got the, the opportunity to participate in one of the panels here with the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation just a couple of weeks in the new supply chain connectivity framework action plan. So it's number three. They actually establish uh, five different choke points, they call it, like these bottlenecks that they need to uh, work on to alleviate and, and, and create more uh, and improve influence between economies to be able to, uh, to achieve different strategies to become not just more competitive, but at the same time, also related to sustainability. As this fifth priority talks about the lack of understanding on the green supply chain management. What are those practices and how by building better policy, uh, these economies are able to increase pressure for supply chains to become more sustainable. And again, this is another risk that in the course we, we also discussed from one side, we know that there is a pressure from consumers that can, can pay more attention to sustainable either products and services. We know that we have different shareholders and investors that are also paying a, a lot of attention and pressure. We have key customers, but at the same time, we also have uh, policymakers that can also in a moment create policy that can drive a different way we, how we operate our supply chains. And of course, these risks are important and that's why it's, it's key for organizations to start paying more attention to, to these topics on sustainable supply chains. Now, let me just start talking about the, the course on sustainable supply chain management. And the first is, this is a course that is inspired on the in-person course that I teach at MIT. This is a graduate course that is being uh, at MIT for uh, 10 years. Uh, different people have worked and collaborated in this one. And still in my case, when I took lead on this course, I've been still engaging with different people from the industry as well as other colleagues at MIT that I will introduce in a moment to trying to build content to introduce students to what are the, the, the foundation to build sustainable supply chains. 
And in this case, the course is, is an introductory course. It, it is not uh, intended to be comprehensive, but at least create awareness of different topics, different strategies, how organizations can start moving toward their, their own carbon targets, but at the same time, by looking at their business goals. And, and, and I will show you in a moment. But the first, of course, this course is inspired by the vision of our university, uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that has as a core the, the vision to solve the problems of humanity. And, and we love this fragment of our vision. We seek to develop in, in all the community, the MIT community, the ability and passion to work wisely, creatively, and effectively for the betterment of humankind. So for us, sustainability is a, is a, is a problem of humanity. And that's why we are launching not just the course, but also disseminating all the knowledge that we have acquired in these years by developing research on different topics on, on, on sustainable logistics, sustainable supply chains, and social sustainability, in sustainable sourcing, and different topics that you, you'll see in a moment. Now, within the MIT, we have the, the Center for Transportation and Logistics, which is, as, as you know, our premier center in logistics, the largest uh, center in terms also of network with all the scale centers we have in all over the world. And our center has a very clear vision, which is creating supply chain innovation and driving it into practice. This is our, our mission. We want to focus again to solve the problems of humanity, but we look at this by by, by building innovative research that lands into applications for our corporate partners. And this is one way that we see this. We have different dimensions in research, outreach, and education. But of course, the foundation of what we do has to do with the research and the connection with the corporate partners and how this fits our different uh, educational programs. And of course, we have the supply chain management program. We have the MicroMasters in supply chain management. Some of you probably have already taken some of these courses or are alums in our courses, but our, our course, ACM 290X, is, is, is having the same foundation, inspired by the same uh, approach of building innovation and disseminating knowledge that will help you become leaders in the field and shape also the topic on sustainable supply chain management in your, in your own organizations. Now, we have different research areas, as you can see, uh, related to technology, innovation, uh, food and retail, humanitarian, uh, last mile, etc. And of course, we have uh, areas on sustainability. And, and in my case, I've been focusing on sustainable logistics for almost 10 years now. But, uh, you know, recently we have uh, some changes because some of our colleagues have moved to different positions. So I've been overseeing now also the rest of the sustainability uh, efforts uh, at the center. And, and this is what's going to be also the core, what's the core of the course that we are offering in this SEM 290X uh, for, for all of you. Now, this is just to compare the results of the poll we just ran a moment ago. Uh, this is just a screenshot of the different corporate partners at the center. These are our partners that uh, help us, you know, drive the, the, the innovation. And many of them uh, sponsor research projects, sponsor thesis caps and projects with their master's students. And we've seen a huge increasing wave of uh, type of projects they are now sponsoring related to sustainability, a lot. Actually, by, in seven years that I've been at MIT, uh, is the first time that I've seen so many, probably half of them related to sustainability. Now, in February, January, I was invited to give a presentation to some of the partners to present just a research brief on the different topics we are doing on sustainable logistics. And then I actually started uh, with the same questions I started this, uh, this webinar. I asked, well, first, does your company have explicit goals and strategies on sustainability? Now, look at the answers. Uh, I believe it's a little bit more skewed, but it's, it's still quite similar. The vast majority is still is, uh, is very much aware about the importance of sustainability. So yes, no, I'm not sure. Then I asked the question again, which dimension of sustainability apart from the economic? And it looks again, quite similar to what uh, you all also responded in these polls. Uh, the majority seems to be at this stage, mostly interested in, in environmental, although we know that social is quite relevant. It's it probably at this stage, not as, not as uh, taken as serious as environmental, but we know it's very important and creates also more vulnerabilities in the supply chain. So we don't know how it's gonna be in the next years. Now the question uh, to, to, to the extent of uh, the carbon reduction targets for the next 10, 20 years, uh, 30 years, then here again, we saw similar behavior. In the poll with you, we saw half-half, which is also interesting. But in this case, uh, we saw that actually the majority that we're having, or at least commenting on their uh, corporate strategy, having sustainability criteria there, uh, they also have seen that they either their customers or themselves have made a pledge 
or achieving certain goals for the next 10, 20, or 30 years. Now, how to achieve these carbon targets while meeting business goals? And that's, uh, that's the key question, right? Uh, it's not trivial, but of course, the important thing is to first be aware that this is what we want to achieve. To, to just claim that you want to achieve as a company uh, some goals on sustainability, but putting at risk your own business from the economic perspective is not sustainable. So the idea is how we can look at this from a more systemic, comprehensive way in, in which we can provide solutions that are more holistic and help the company also track the performance in the all criteria and make strategic decisions to that end. And just to do this, I would like just to explain a little bit more about the importance of how the path is built to achieve this carbon goal. And this is actually a chart inspired by a nice conversation having with a PhD student from our center, Jonas, that is also working on these topics on sustainability. And, and in this, what you see here is in the, in the uh, horizontal axis, you have the years, you know, from today up to 2040, could be 2050, but the different years. And we know we have also in the vertical axis, the uh, CO2 emissions in which we have certain emissions that you have already identified in your current carbon footprinting or your greenhouse gas inventory you have conducted, and what's your target, what you're intending to achieve in the next years. So the idea here is that everybody is very much aware that this has to do with an investment in technology. So we know we want to, uh, we want to make an investment in renewable energies, in different equipment, in electric vehicles, or different hydrogen technologies. So we know there is something related to that that is going to help us move material in the supply chain in a more sustainable way. Now, I'm just talking about the environmental sustainability in this case. But if we have that uh, moment in which the technology will become more affordable, of course, the discussions between now shippers and carriers is always related to this. From one side, the shippers are pushing the carriers to go for this technology, and the carriers are claiming why you are not putting more money or are you willing to pay more. And this is always usually the elephant in the room in almost any conversation presentation I'm invited to discuss. Now, the way that companies are seen is that in some moment, the incentives either by the government or just the economy are going to take this, you're going to achieve this technology that becomes more affordable. And at this stage, you're going to, as a company, start squeezing deficiencies to achieve this reduction of carbon emissions and then achieve your carbon target by either 2040 or whatever is the year you are establishing this goal. Now, it could be that once the technology is more affordable, there is better ways to actually squeeze those efficiencies and become even fa not faster, but at least with less emissions in the path to get to 2040 you know, at the point in which you're gonna achieve your carbon target. Now this works very well, but what we argue is that there are ways in which you can start establishing some quick wins now to start reducing the emissions, even prior to this adoption of technology that is gonna happen either when, you know, different uh, investments are done. And once you get the affordability, you're gonna probably achieve it even in more straight line to be able to achieve this, this reduction. Now, make no mistake, all of them achieve the same carbon target. But that's why we say the path is more important than the goal, because the difference here is first by focusing on this area that only can be achieved by these quick wins that is related to decisions we can make at this stage. If we don't do it, this is going to be a cumulative amount of emissions that is going to definitely have an impact in climate change. And the interesting part is that we tend to discuss more about the carbon uh, target instead of discussing the path that actually makes a whole difference of what's going to be the effect for the for the environment and in, the, in, in general for society and the planet. Now, how to do it? We just put this into an impact effort chart. And what we argue here is that there are, of course, different efforts we can, we can have. Uh, but if those efforts, uh, either is, is, is little or, or a lot, only bring a, a limited impact, we shouldn't waste time on those because the time is really relevant at this stage. It's much more important to focus on those that have high impact. And of course, the one that has the highest is the investment on the equipment. And we know this. If we change the energy sources, the network, the supply, and we are starting looking at all this investment for the next years, five, 10 years, this is the one that definitely is going to have a significant amount of reduction in, in the carbon emissions, which in turn is also going to help companies achieve their carbon target. But as I mentioned before, there are something that we call the quick wins, which is related to the decisions in the supply chain. At this stage, this has to do a lot with an example that I also mentioned in the course, which is when we tend to have problems with certain uh, components. And I, and, I, and I use the example of having an organ. For instance, if I have a problem with a kidney, that uh, thanks God, not, not that I know of, but imagine that there is a problem with a kidney and then you say, well, what's the problem? Well, just have a kidney transplant and then make the kidney even stronger and better so that you never have a problem with your kidney. Well, that's one way to do it. 
The other way could be that maybe I should stop drinking so much alcohol, or maybe I should drink more water, or maybe I should do more exercises. So there are certain decisions that are gonna drive the performance of a hotspot in the supply chain. And that's what makes the difference. Having a specific warehouse that has high emissions or a specific transportation lane that has high emissions, this might be a consequence of an inventory policy you have in place, of a, mis of a, of a, of a uh, very large uh, problem in the error with the forecast or could be related to other strategies in sourcing. So things that are related to other parts of the supply chain may actually drive the rest of the hotspots in the supply chain. And that's the secret, not to just identify hotspots, but identify where are those causes by looking at the supply chain decisions. And this is something that we emphasize a lot also in this course, not just by looking at what could be an important investment, but also looking at what you can do at this time in the organization to really help the company achieve those carbon targets. So now we look at different approaches and we like uh, you know, this, this chart in which from one side, we still like the idea of squeezing for efficiencies in the supply chain and logistics. We look at examples using data analytics, machine learning, different type of mapping and, and, and measurements so that we can really find uh, optimized operations in the supply chain that can balance both business goals as fill rate, service level, minimization of cost, at the same time also reduction in carbon emissions. So we translate many of these things we are discussing into the operational level. And that's something, again, organizations in, in, in our experience have a struggle with, because while they have these corporate strategies with sustainability, when, when we discuss with either supply chain planners or schedulers or people that are making decisions, they, they, they don't know what exactly is the impact of their decisions in these strategies. And there are ways to really build this type of metrics to help those, 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 those people in the organization to achieve those. So we're in favor of that. But at the same time, we are also in favor of growing the supply capacity by looking at also the cost, customer and consumer side. And this is also, again, another part that is very unique in our course. We look at how we can involve consumers and customers into our sustainability strategies. And by doing this, we can grow the capacity of the way that we supply in, in really large large amount and the and the savings are many times as significant and if and if the company had made some investments in the equipment as as big as that but again at this stage many customers consumers get access to products and services and they have no idea what is their footprint of that decision and whether a different way in their behavior may can actually help the company achieve those sustainability strategies so in the context but now, enough of all these conversations. I hope that you get a sense of the things that we're going to be discussing and things we're going to be doing. But in general, we have a course, as I said, this is a half-term course at MIT, which means it's only seven weeks. It's a short course, but also deep in content. It's going to run from November 9th to January 17th next year. And we have seven uh, main modules. We start with introduction to sustainable supply chains, in which we discuss some of the basic concepts, as well as the business implications. We continue with the environmental hotspots, which is key. Do you get what you measure? So we are going to discuss different measurements. You're going to do exercises of conducting some uh, carbon footprinting in supply chains and using that information to establish some decisions. Then we're going to spend a couple of, uh, of modules, three and four, to discuss topics on sustainable logistics. And this is mainly my, my, my research expertise, discussing routing, transportation, network design, a fleet composition, and also the topic of involving consumers into this decision making. Then later, we are going to move to sustainable sourcing. And for this one, I'm going to invite my colleague, Dr. Dave Correll, uh, the lead of the uh, sustainability uh, survey that we have launched, and probably some of you have already responded it, or at least seen the, 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 the amazing insights that he has uh, built with this uh, uh, interesting uh, approach. And he's also an expert on, on procurement. So he's gonna come and discuss with us some of these topics on sustainable sourcing. And I'm gonna complement with uh, something related to green inventory strategies. Then later we have in week six, uh, Eva Ponce, Dr. Eva Ponce, which is the executive director of the MicroMasters in supply chain management, as well as the lead on omnichannel distribution strategies at the center. And she's gonna discuss the topic of circular supply chains. As you know, this is a key topic, very uh, fashionable all the discussions of the closed loop supply chains, reverse logistics. She's been doing research on this for more than 10 years and is gonna come and share some of these insights also related to the e-commerce context. And last but not least, uh, the topic in last week of improving the social performance in supply chains. This is delivered by our colleague, uh, Dr. Alexis Bateman, which is uh, also a research affiliate at the center as well as also a lead practitioner in uh, Amazon Web Services. 
And she's gonna, she, she actually was the director of sustainable supply chains. And I have to say the mastermind behind the course, which she tried to launch it. And then later uh, I inherited it from, from her. And I'm very happy that she still keeps the engagement with us and is gonna deliver this topic uh, that also involves plenty of the research she has conducted for the last uh, uh, 10 years also at the center. So this is a plan just to give you some screenshots of the things we are gonna use Lightboard and discuss some of these ideas. We are gonna also use some simulators uh, in which you are gonna play to make decisions, you know, in the either monthly or weekly basis. And we are gonna make comparisons with the rest of the, of the class to also see what is your performance in achieving carbon targets, but at the same time, keeping fill rate and keeping also uh, cost low. We also are gonna have Dave Correll, as I said, discussing this sustainable sourcing and different strategies. And also Eva, in order circular circularity, circular supply chains, as I said. Uh, we also have Alexis, as I said, discussing responsible supply chains, which by the way, she also led that initiative at the center. And combining all this, you know, we are intending to provide really an amazing learning experience for all of you that enroll to the course. So these are the instructors that are gonna be with you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Jose Velasquez, as I said, research scientist, and I'm, I'm the course lead, but also my colleagues, Alexis Bateman, Dave Correll, uh, Eva Ponce, that are gonna be close, teaching also with you, uh, with me, and teaching you, and, uh, and also helping in this interaction with all of you. We also have the sign up of, uh, of our community teaching assistants, a, a team of uh, uh, eight brilliant students that uh, also took my class in some moment, in-person class, got an A or an A plus, and they are, uh, are also willing lead practitioners in different field that are gonna be taking part of the forum discussions. And if they are also attending this, uh, this call, uh, deeply grateful with all of you for doing this. And, uh, and last, of course, as I said, uh, Julia Peterson that already uh, introduced herself. She's being also instrumental in all this work for the course, uh, helping a lot in following up and planning all the deliveries that we have for, for this uh, interesting course. And we are getting ready. She's gonna be your, your TA and, uh, and myself also taking part of all these discussions. But uh, with that, I say thank you. Uh, if you are interested, please, uh, Either in the chat, I'm sure we already have shared or not, we are gonna be sharing the, the course link so that you can enroll if you haven't done. And you can also uh, reach out to us in our, in our uh, either uh, emails, personal emails, and also sustainable.mit.edu, uh, which is the, the website of our, of our research lab. And that's all I have to say. And now we are uh, ready to answer some, uh, some questions or comments that you may have. Thank you so much for your attention. All right, so Yule, if you see any comments in the chat, uh, please let me know and then we can we can start having fun. Yeah, so we have a few questions in our Q&A um, section. So the question is, um, is carbon neutral good enough? Shouldn't they be pledging to achieve net zero? Uh, of course, this is, an, uh, this is an interesting question. Ideally, of course, we want uh, organizations to, to be pure uh, carbon neutral meaning uh, avoiding as much as possible the carbon offsets, which is probably, as, as you know, a big discussion at the moment. So uh, at this stage, without carbon offsets, it's, 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 it's practically impossible to really achieve uh, a net zero, right? This is the reality because we don't have necessarily the technology and almost any economic activity has, in, in a way, certain impact for the environment. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that goal should, should, should be erased, that this should be a name, a long aim, but in the meantime, what we should probably try to enforce with the organization is that they should achieve a, as much reduction as possible and try to minimize the, the amount of carbon offset they have in their strategies. But this is an interesting point. And I believe, uh, uh, of course, once you are also in your company or yourself now, it's important that you keep that conviction to really drive a real change to really help environment and society. Awesome. I hope that covered that question. We have another question from Igor. We will will be the course as pre-required for SCM blended program. Uh, not yet, right? No, there is no evidence that that's going to happen. Uh, of course, I've been discussing with uh, with both Eva Ponce and also Chris Kaplis, the executive director of the of the center, uh, about this idea. But uh, so far, the course is 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 as a side, even though it's inspired by the content in the MicroMasters and different courses, is not part of the MicroMasters. And at this stage, we don't see when this is going to be uh, the case. But uh, but that doesn't mean 
that the course is not as relevant. It's as relevant as uh, the course is also part of the key electives for the master's program in supply chain management. And if you are a blended, hopefully you will take the course also in person. Awesome. We have another question from Scott. He asks, when considering emissions intensity, we must consider weight, not just distance like a typical MILP. When calculating routing, will this course provide instruction on how to do this modeling? Ah, this is actually something we cover very comprehensively. Uh, definitely, I am, I am against the idea of, uh, of just arguing that the reduction of miles or reduction of distance implies reduction of CO2 emissions. In fact, in the class, I always make this joke that uh, all the students should repeat themselves, you know, before starting the class. In, in green logistics, shorter distance does not necessarily mean less CO2 emissions. When I say repeat it again, if you go for a date, if you are with your family, just repeat it, right? Because this is true. As you are just pointing out, Scott, uh, weight matters a lot. The topographic conditions of the, of the road also matters, the speed matters. So when you combine all these conditions, you may actually have plenty of routes in which uh, uh, you, you may actually have increased in, in the distance, but actually achieve reductions of fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. And we, we, we definitely look at these models. We show some of the, of the modeling behind scenes, but as I said before, this is a, an introductory course. You may get knowledge, sufficient knowledge to really follow up on this and, and look for the right references, understand what are the main drivers. And, and if you are already uh, good in, in analytics, it's uh, an, an optimization. It, it's very likely you will be able to make implementations in, in your company. But this is something I definitely spent uh, a sufficient amount of time to really discuss these insights. Thank you for bringing this up. Thanks. Um, is the course going to be self-paced or scheduled on weekly deadlines? Uh, it's going to be scheduled. And so far, we are not going to go on demand like the SC0X. Uh, so we'll see if it's the first time we are launching it. So we want to really stay close. And we know that, uh, oh, sorry, I know that uh, the, uh, in the course, we are gonna also cross uh, some, some festivities and we are gonna also be mindful of that and provide some, uh, some weeks for, for you to work, but we are gonna stay very close. And our idea is that we can keep a very open interaction and follow up with all the, all the, all the students that, uh, that enroll. Perfect. Thank you for that question. Um, another question from Jorge Moreno, he asks, I saw- From who, from who? sorry? I'm not so sure how to pronounce it correctly. Uh, you can have a look in the Q Jorge, also. you said Jorge Moreno? I think so, yeah. Ah, I, nice. He's a student of, was a former student of mine. Yeah, go ahead. Ah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, he asked, I saw Kinexis as a sponsor. What examples of sustainability targets and involvement can software companies have? Ah, what well, was the question that Kinexis is sponsoring? I didn't get the question. Yes, I saw Kinexis as a sponsor. What examples of sustainability targets on involvement can software companies have? Uh, there are plenty of, of examples, uh, but probably Jorge, you uh, uh, would like to know that with Kinaxis, we are we are also talking very closely to uh, to bring some different ideas related to uh, translating those sustainability strategies into the uh, the, the planning level. I know I, we are interested in in helping those that are doing demand planning inventory. A planning to really get information about how their decisions affect their metrics on, on, on sustainability, how they either contribute or not. And those decisions in general are going to really drive a lot of behavior, at least this is what we are expecting. So we are actually having a plenty of conversa conversations. Kinaxis is a, is a great partner. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing this, this collaboration. But thank you for your question, Jorge. Nice to, to say hi to you. Awesome. We have another question from Jean-Francois. I think it's a French name. I hope I pronounced it the correct way. Um, and I can maybe even answer that one. Uh, it is, what is the deadline to enroll to the verified track of the course? Jose, do you mind if I answer that question? Please, Julia, this okay. is all you. So it's the 30th of November. So the first week, um, you won't have any like deadlines, any homework. And then the uh, second and the third week, you have um, lectures. And after the second week, you can enroll on the verified tracks. So you can have a look at the uh, lectures first, uh, enroll free. And if you like it, you can enroll to the verified track. Um, yeah, I hope that answers that question. Uh, we have another question from Oscar. It's, does the course covers the different standards to do a greenhouse gas emissions inventories? Is some of them, right? This is a good, a good question, but some of them, as you know, there are plenty of different standards. Uh, so we, uh, when we do, for instance, the exercise of the carbon footprinting in the supply chain, which we are looking at case study 
uh, written by uh, Professor Elsa Oliverti from MIT and also Dr. Edgar Blanco. Uh, what we do is that we, we, we look at the different entities in a supply chain that is having operations in Asia and the US. And the idea is to, uh, by using uh, the greenhouse gas protocol, we, we teach how to do this carbon footprinting. Now, but once we, we look at that, once we are discussing the sustainable transportation, we spend a little bit more time discussing other standards. For instance, we, we compare GLEG framework, which is you know, the, the most widely used uh, transportation uh, methodology to estimate emissions. Uh, also with, with emission factors from the greenhouse gas protocol, we may use also DEFRA. We also use NTM from Europe. And the idea is to, to, uh, to discuss how the accuracy of these estimations may, may actually drive uh, a correct or wrong supply chain management decision. So we spend time on that and we make some recommendations. But as I said, just to discuss exactly how you're going to implement all of this with following completely a standard, it might be a little bit beyond the scope. But again, with that topic, it's very likely that the participant will be able to, to explore that on their own. Awesome. Thanks, Osprey. Um, another question from Teddy. Um, I think he has been also the MicroMasters in SCM. Uh, he yes. asks, um, the concept of sustainability SCM in the sustainable SCM report is the same that is used in the course? Question mark. Thanks. Uh, the, con well, the, the, the sustainability is, is survey uh, is not that it's having a specific, uh, as far as I understand, right? If not, Dave will, will, will probably kill me. Uh, but but as far as I understand, it's more like getting the insights from the practitioners. What do they understand by by looking at the definition of sustainability, right? So this is this is more more that rather than saying we know what is the right definition. So the way that we see it in the course is that we embrace all the definitions. Uh, particularly, what we do is we focus more on on the actions, as as we said in our, in our timeline of the course. We try to avoid the conversation whether this is a pure you know, a strong sustainability approach for a company or a weak sustainability, or whether the company is having uh, the sustainability as a business strategy or is more like, you know, part of their essence in their culture. We, we, we discuss these things to create awareness that this exists, but we immediately move to, to the majority of the organizations that are facing the problem of saying, okay, whether I believe in this or not, now I'm here, I have a carbon target, I have a, a challenge, now I need to do something about it. Now, we, we embrace the definition of sustainability, even though we spend most of the time discussing environmental sustainability. And the reason is because the same as in the surveys, it seems the one that compl companies are mostly interested in at this stage. But we also spend time on, on social, you know, particularly with our, our expert on this, Alexis Bateman. And the economic side is always in the side of all the discussions. So in a way, we are keeping, you know, a general definition of sustainability in the course that is, is pretty much practice oriented and this is how we we wanted to keep it so hopefully this answers your question and hopefully you feel excited to to join us perfect uh we have a lot more questions so let's go on with those um a question from mohammed i'm not totally sure if i understand it right i hope Josue, you understand it it's how are my measuring progress how are your measuring pro progress? Yes, I'm not so sure. Maybe Mohammed means how the progress in the course is like measured. Um, um, well, we, yeah, I mean, yours, I don't know, but uh, the ones that we teach, uh, we try to, we try, as I said before, we try to provide different approaches to, uh, to compare what is the impact of selecting different me uh, techniques to measure emissions and how those drive different supply chain management and logistics decisions. So this is a, a core discussion in the course because we really believe that whenever possible, a company should focus on very detailed approaches to get those estimations. Awesome, thanks. I think that was the correct answer because we got a thumbs up. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you, Mohammed. Cool. So Carlos asks, how does climate change impact agricultural supply chains? <sighs> Well, you know, I, I will not pretend to be the expert on that uh, on that question, Carlos. Uh, I am sure that uh, Dave Correll probably is the right person to answer that question. But of course, the answer is uh, there is a lot of impact, a lot of impact into mainly all the entities in the supply chain, and particularly in extraction like agriculture. It matters. It matters a lot. But I uh, I will not venture to give you a more discussion on that. I invite you to join the course and also participate in those discussions in our discussion forums once we are there. And Dave Correll, that discusses a lot on sustainable sourcing, would probably spend more time answering those questions. Perfect. So Rui says, um, as you said, the path is more important than the goal. 
My perception is that most companies are currently just declaring interesting strategic plans, but don't have a concrete plan. The program will cover how to convince the decision people to go beyond the nice declarations. And yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm very much aware with you on this one, right? Even though I believe there are some companies that definitely have invested, taking the time to really um, build interesting plans. But I believe this is honestly a key question at this stage, at least in my experience, when I've been discussing with both, you know, companies and, and, and both in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in CPGs, logistics, as well as consulting companies, the challenge is, okay, we, we've done some exercises in estimating our carbon emissions. Uh, we already identified clear hotspots, so we have already implemented some strategies that we know are going to help immediately. But then from there to say, now I need to get in 2040 or 2050 uh, carbon neutral, the path is still very, very strange. How are we going to do it? What are the investments in which moment? What initiatives? So those questions are still in the place and companies do not know it. And, and our intention is to, is to help them reflect on this by looking also at the framework that I was discussing today, which is focus on this investment, but spend time also looking at what you can do at these current decisions. Now, the, the, the feeling that I get is that they, they don't wanna make in general investments that uh, will jeopardize also their uh, uh, economic competitiveness, right? We want to make sure that by, by investing, they still are gonna be able to deliver and being profitable. That's, uh, that's the main, at least approach we, we use to discuss and uh, try to convince them to embrace it. So the way to do it is that we acknowledge that that's the approach and we look at any decision that we are making, any recommendation that we are making, always looking at the side, what is the economic impact as well? The impact in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cost minimization as well as the service how much these decisions may or not affect or, or capability to serve the customers with the standards, times, and quantities that they are used to. And again, how we can balance all of this. And we use examples in almost anything, in, in consolidation strategies, in routing, in inventory planning. So all those decisions in this course, we are gonna play with that and create that awareness. And that's mostly our, our idea that you, are, if you become familiar with these tools and also conscious that this is an opportunity for organizations to really embrace this in a in a realistic way in which they can achieve those goals and at the same time looking at the business expectations. Awesome. Thanks, Rosemary. Welcome. So Jean-Francois asked another question. Thanks for being so active, Jean-Francois. Um, he asks, does the course address the types of cooperation with non-business stakeholders like NGOs to improve the supply chain sustainability? Yeah, I wish I could tell you that that's the case. The reality is that we mention it, right? So we discuss about the importance of, uh, of the NGOs and, and how they also may drive uh, plenty of behavior. But we, um, uh, you know, they, we, we don't do particular, uh, how to say, the, the, a differentiation between the, the type of content we develop based on, on, on these NGOs, except for one project that, for instance, we discuss uh, at least an illustration of the green network design because we work on a capstone project just uh, last class uh, with uh, with UNICEF in Zimbabwe in Africa. Uh, it was actually sponsored uh, by a former student Yuto and uh, and also uh, done by a couple of brilliant students, uh, Tim and uh, and Karim. Uh, and the idea was to uh, uh, to do a, a distribution a strategy to deliver particular goods that were needed in Zimbabwe. But again, the approach didn't vary that much because mainly it was related to how to build this network to achieve certain reduction of emissions by keeping the service level of this network. So we, we treated the NGO as if it was any other organization. But at least we created the, the awareness. Unfortunately, we do not spend, we do not have so much time to really discuss much more than that. Perfect, thanks, Josue. So unfortunately, the time is uh, almost up. Um, so if you have more time, you can still stay in here or we can finish this way. What do you prefer? No, if, uh, I, I would be happy to uh, to at least take five minutes more, right? And then if you have more questions, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take the chat and try to answer you. But if you can reach out to us, maybe we can write uh, some of our emails in the chat so that they can yeah. reach out to us and make sure that uh, you get your uh, your answers because we we really want, want you to, uh, to help you decide to join us in this uh, in this fascinating course. Awesome. So if you want to stay, everyone is welcome to stay. We will answer a few more questions, but I will write my email address um, in here. So if you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, 
yeah, so this is my email address. Just message me. Um, and we have a few more questions to go. Okay, so another one is, is it actually possible to assess accurately the final carbon footprint of a product or a service when it should require to get to get the visibility of all the upstream chain beginning from raw material industries? Well, that was a very comprehensive question, and I believe it was a little bit too fast for me to capture everything. But I can <laughs> tell you, I can tell you that uh, yeah, we we also mentioned the product footprint, uh, but this is not a course on life cycle assessment. Right, so we do not uh, do that exercise because that will require probably a, a different type of, uh, of course, like industrial ecology in that regard. And so this, at least what we do is what we mentioned the, the existence of this product footprint, but what we do is discuss more the, what we call the corporate footprint. Is more what are the missions associated with the organizations and the supply chains operating with those products and services. So this is a slightly different, as, as you can see, because the other is, is something that in a, in a manner is a little bit fixed. So this is the life cycle because of the materials and how this is extracted and how this is moved and there's a discussion on functional units in this case it's more about how you are designing in supply chain management your decisions on transportation planning inventory production and those things are the ones that we are going to assess what are the environmental impacts or sustainability impacts in the in in those decisions right but we mentioned that and of course there are other courses in life cycle assessment that you can also go, but hopefully you find also that the corporate footprint matters a lot, particularly when you are looking at achieving those carbon targets for the next years. Awesome. So Yasin asks, meeting targets is important, but setting the right emissions target is even more critical. Are companies mm -hmm. able to measure their emissions accurately? Are they able to connect those measurements to business decisions? Oh my goodness, this is brilliant questions. So the first one I will say it's uh, arguable, uh, not the case, right? We don't know because it depends a lot on this discussion. We are saying what is the right methodology to estimate emissions, right? The important thing at the end, the way that we see it is to keep consistency. What we have observed and we discuss a lot in the course is that uh, at the corporate level, as organization at the corporate level, many of the methodologies provide similar estimations of emissions. So that, that means it doesn't matter how accurate it is, in the aggregate level, you usually get it right or miss or errors of 5%. Of 5 but when you are gonna uh, assign this to a logistics business supply chain management decision, this is when it makes a whole difference because those, those fluctuations that exist for the error become really relevant and can actually drive a completely different decision. So it matters a lot in the, in the, in the, in the tactical and operational level to really look for the most detailed approach to actually align this with the, with the business decision. Now, at, at this stage, I know that some organizations have started to do this, but this is still a little bit more in the, in the first uh, steps. The important thing is that uh, we develop part of those re the research uh, uh, output, and we intend to disseminate this through the course to help organizations or practitioners like yourself to learn how to really use that information to to make better decisions that will account for this for these impacts. So this is part of the content, and and the other is part of the discussion we are going to also have. Awesome. We have another question from Rishi. I think I can. Uh, Maybe the last one. That. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's lectures would have recommended readings and white papers. And yes, after each lecture and even before we have listed recommended readings uh, that you have to read and also some that you wouldn't have to read that are just interesting, um, like additional readings. So yeah, we have a lot of them. Awesome. So I think, uh, as Jose said, the time is up. Um, as I said, you can send me all your questions um, and I'm really happy maybe to see you again, I guess. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, uh, Julia. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. And uh, as Julia said, we look forward to having you in our virtual class. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.